Hi fellow engineers, I'm Hendrik from Engineerdo. A very common question we get asked is what kind of computer system should I get when I'm starting with DEM or CFD simulations. Of course this is not easy to answer because it's highly depending on what type of simulation you are doing and on the other hand what's your financial background or the money you can spend on your computer. While the person working for a major enterprise maybe can afford a complete high performance computing cluster. On the other hand, a PhD candidate in the uni maybe only has his own computer available. Our goal at Engineerdo is more or less a democratization of the EM and CFD simulations. So we would like also to give you in this video a very easy access point and a recommendation what kind of a computer system you should get to do DEM or CFD simulations on industrial size problems. In this video we are trying to put a system together with the best bang for the buck and not only recommend you some high performing system which will work definitely. So what we are doing is basically high performance computing on a budget. Before we can do this we have to put a test together where we can measure the actual performance of this new system we want to recommend to other systems we have access to. So that we are basically creating a benchmark which is also available from our webpage so you can check on your system um, how good your processor is running compared to the systems we have access to. Our budget system should be capable of simulating an industrial size and what is an industrial size is should be a larger problem with at least 1 million particles. With that kind of system, a lot of industrial and scientific problems can be solved easily. Our performance benchmark should contain a belt conveyor with a rotating pulley and a larger hopper which holds the particles. The number of particles will increase from 0 to 1 million particles which are then filled by the belt conveyor into the hopper. The benchmark is available on our webpage engineerdo.com. If you like, you can run it on your computer and post the results in the comments or send them to us via mail. We will then include the results in the report on our webpage. As a disclaimer, we did not get paid by any company to do this test. What we are recommending and the values we show are tested by us. All computers we use are our own or systems we have access to. We tested the simulation on 9 different computers from the last years. Most of the computers are workstation PCs with two Intel processor CPUs and a different number of cores. However, within our test batch we also included two consumer PCs with only a single CPU. One of these will be our recommendation. Additionally, we were able to run the simulation on a cluster with four CPUs and 64 cores. The results are shown in this diagram. The slowest computer was an i7 with four cores running on 4 GHz. On position 8 to 4 we have a variety of Intel Xeon server CPUs with mainly two CPUs built into one workstation. From 8 to 24 cores were used during the simulation. Position 1 is set by a 4 CPU cluster using 64 cores. The second position is another workstation using a newer Intel Xeon processor. On position 3 we have our recommended system if you want to do high performance computing on a budget. As you can see it's fairly compatible using a 12 core state of the art AMD Ryzen 9 3600X processor. We used the system instead of the 16 core alternative which should be a bit faster because of its higher clock rate and the lower price. We also can have a look to the computational velocity which means how many integration steps the system can perform per real life second. The results look pretty similar to the results from the total runtime, but small changes are visible. One obvious example is the PC on place 8 outperforms the PC ranking on 7. That means on a longer simulation PC8 would have been faster than PC7. How can this be? If we have a closer look to the results we can see that the computational performance is changing during the runtime of the simulation. While the simulation starts with no particles, light is performing a high number of steps per second. The number of particles increases until 1 million are inserted while the steps per second which can be computed are decreasing. Also, after 15 seconds all particles are inserted in the system and the system comes to a steady state with less and less kinetic energy in it. This can be seen in the increasing rate of steps per second at around 17 seconds in the diagram. During the last 2 seconds the particles are mainly at rest so the solution algorithm has less to do due to no changing contacts. The particles stay in their contacts. 
If we have a look to these two results in detail, we can see that the 12-core high clock rate CPU performs significantly better for smaller particle numbers, but with a higher count of particles in the system, the differences are getting smaller. As a result, we can assume that a higher number of cores in a system should be used if large number of particles have to be simulated. A cluster computer will perform as its best if the number of particles increases significantly above 1 million. Another interesting fact we can find in the results is a partly reduced computational efficiency during the simulation. The orange and blue lines show a reduction of the step rates by roughly 25% for some time during the runtime of the simulation. This could be a result of background tasks these computers perform. Another reason could be insufficient cooling. However, cooling issues would probably stay during the runtime and would not fluctuate like we see it here. From the results, we can now recommend the AMD system. This system uses beside the Ryzen 9, uh, X570 mainboard chip, 32GB of DDR4 RAM, a GeForce RTX 2060 graphics card, and for the main storage, a 1TB PCI Express SSD. If you want to build a similar system, we placed a couple of links to the main components in the description below the video. With these components, you know what you can expect from your future simulation machine. This system should cost you roughly between 1200 and 1300 euros. The power supply with 630 watts power output is probably the smallest in the collection and should also run the simulation much more energy and cost efficient as compared to the workstations. If you have a higher budget, we would probably go with one of these state-of-the-art Threadripper CPUs, even if we were not able to test them so far. If you want to compare your own system to our benchmark, please make sure that you are not changing the script we are providing on our webpage. The simulation runtime can probably be improved if the cores are aligned manually. However, the results will not be comparable anymore. The results are written in a CSV data file, which you can also send us via email. If you also include the description of your computer and the processor you are using, we will include the results into our diagrams on our webpage. If you like this video, then please give us a thumbs up and post your runtime in the comments. Or danke baby. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and post your runtime. Thanks for watching. See you the next time. Maybe with a performance benchmark on OpenFoam.